The 2015 hurricane season officially ended November 30th, but there were some pretty memorable moments this year. For my radar, I'm meteorologist Leslie Hudson. El Nino likely helped shape this year's season. Many of the tropical systems hit a wall of wind shear. Wind shear is common during El Nino events. That's when strong winds change with height either in speed and or direction. Rain and thunderstorms can get blown away from the center of the storm. High wind shear left a graveyard of tropical cyclones including Danny, Erica, Fred, Grace, and Ida through the summer months. Anna was the second earliest tropical cyclone ever to make landfall in the United States on record. Anna made landfall near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina on May 10th. The only other tropical storm to make landfall earlier in a calendar year in the United States was an unnamed tropical storm in February of 1952, which hit South Florida. Bill spent the majority of its life over land and not water. After making landfall in Texas as a tropical storm, Bill moved north across the plains and east into Mississippi and the Ohio Valley before becoming a post-tropical system in eastern Kentucky. Bill spent three days over land, more than 80% of its total lifespan as a tropical cyclone. It was only over water, which is its main life source, for about 14 hours. The most serious impact from Bill was the flooding it caused in already saturated Texas and Oklahoma. Tropical Storm Erica caused deadly flooding in Dominica and is an example of why you don't need a powerful hurricane to cause deadly and devastating impacts. The small island of Dominica saw more than a foot of rain in just 12 hours, resulting in damaged homes, roads were washed out, and it flooded the airport. At least 20 people were killed by Erica's flooding. Erica will also be remembered for its uncertain forecast, with some projections showing it would make impact in Florida as a strong tropical storm or a hurricane. That prompted a state of emergency to be declared in Florida. However, Erica never made it to the United States. In fact, it dissipated over eastern Cuba thanks to a combination of wind shear, dry air, and mountains. Hurricane Joaquin rapidly intensified near the Bahamas to become a Category 4 hurricane on the first day of October. Joaquin was an intense hurricane. It persistently lashed the Bahamas for two days, resulting in severe impacts. A total blackout was reported on three of the hardest hit islands in the central Bahamas. About 85% of the homes in one settlement on Crooked Island were reportedly destroyed. And Joaquin also contributed to the sinking of a cargo ship known as El Faro, resulting in the deaths of 33 crew members that were aboard. Although Joaquin remained well off the U.S. coast, it helped provide an extra injection of moisture that created catastrophic flooding in South Carolina along with a separate weather system. Finally, another for the record books. A record 65 straight hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin have missed Florida. The last hurricane to strike the state was Wilma on October 24, 2005. So Florida's hurricane drought has extended well past the 10-year mark. However, experts warn it will likely not be another decade before a hurricane comes calling the to the Sunshine the State. For my radar, I'm meteorologist Leslie Hudson.